Hi, this is Charles Kelly. Uh, good to speak to you again. Uh, money tips and bringing you money tips, hopefully to save you, earn, accumulate and enjoy more money. Great to, to see you on Facebook Live as, as always. Uh, thanks for, for tuning in. It's, it's really good to have, have you on board and also on my uh, podcast, uh, which um, it, you can be found on, on iTunes and uh, Stitcher and places like that. So great to see you. Now, you, you may have heard over the, the weekend that um, the trading standards and, and the government is looking into the, these companies that offer a quick sale for your house. Uh, it's, it's a bit like, I don't know if you've seen these adverts, We Buy Any Car, yeah, webuyanycar.com. Uh, yeah, they buy any car, but not at any price. And it's normally the price that favours them, not, not you. And I've, I've seen this in action with a friend of mine who brought... Uh, their car along to, to we buy any car initially they quote you a price I think in this case it would say nine grand and then when you get there they say well today it's changed it's now eight seven and they look around the car which is expected you know and, and there's, a, there's a scratch here and that sort of thing and suddenly you're looking at you know under eight thousand pounds which I think it eventually ended up with um, however it does provide a convenient way of selling your car quickly without having to put you know things in ads put ads in papers and, and ebay and having people coming and going and perhaps risking a dodgy check or a, or a dodgy transaction uh, so it, it's it's a convenient way and similarly with these we buy any property type of outfits um it, it's it's going it will give you a lower price but it's a convenient way of selling your property perhaps without the hassle and perhaps very quickly if people need to sell quickly and they can't do that through normal agents. I mean, there's a company near who have offices based near, near where I am called uh, Property Rescue and uh, they've got adverts on the radio all the time and they say, Property Rescue, those nice people at Property Rescue, they bought my property within a week or within 24 hours we had a deal agreed. They're such lovely people and they gave me a cash back. <laughs> Well, where do you think the cashback comes from? I mean, where do these cashbacks come from? Do you think they're giving the cash out of their pocket? It's like these mortgages. Oh, I've got a cashback on my mortgage. Of course, it's priced into the bloody mortgage. The same thing with a cashback. They're buying your house, but giving you a cashback. Well, I don't get that because you, you, you get the cash for the sale of the house. What do you want a cashback for? It's all priced in. But they make them sound like such nice people. They're helping you. They're helping you. Of course they are, yes. And if you go to their office, you'll see that outside their office is a dirty great big black Rolls Royce. It's, it's about 30 foot long, this Rolls Royce. So you can see, you know, this, this nice people are, are, are making quite a lot of money, these people. So, well, fair enough. I don't, I've got nothing against people making money. But what I'm saying here, I'm, what I'm reporting is the fact that the trading standards are a little bit worried about this because they feel that some people are being exploited, if you like, um, some people are told, yes, they can sell their homes within 14 days, um, but it's uh, at a price. Uh, one woman complained that she is worried that a, a three-bed semi, which she agreed to put on sale for 250 has effectively been devalued by the company and the price has been dropped by £20,000 without her knowledge. Well, I don't get that because, you know, you don't sell your property over the counter. You sell it through a solicitor and if 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 the the price has to be eventually agreed when you exchange sign contracts so i don't, i can't see how they've hoodwinked her you know surely they've agreed a deal and then it goes to solicitors and then uh you, you eventually sign the papers that that's what you've got solicitors for uh, but trading standards are looking into this and they said on on the radio the other day that they've got several companies uh, on their radar so they're looking into several companies it could become more regulated uh, which would not be a bad thing because estate agents are unregulated at the moment. Anybody can set up an estate agent in an office and call themselves, I'm an estate agent now, you know, I'm an expert, you know. Well, is that really true? A lot of estate agents are people that, you know, have not been in, the, in that business for very long. They, they've, they've had very little training. Uh, not all estate agents are like that, of course, but a lot of them are very inexperienced. They don't, don't really know what they're doing. Um, they pluck prices out of the air. They just give you a price to, to, to hope that you'll list it with them, but they're not going to achieve that price. And, and really, a state agency covers the biggest transaction in your life, buying and selling properties, and yet it's unregulated. 
Uh, the other market is builders, of course, are unregulated. But a state agency, I mean, I get a state agency approaching me all the time and say, well, he's got it on the market for 250000 but I know he's, he needs to sell and he'll probably take two twenty or he'll take two thirty. Well, hang on a second, who's the guy acting for? Now, I don't mind him doing that. Please bring the deals on to me. But then you think to yourself, well, they're supposed to be acting for the vendor, not, not for, for me. And yet they're in there telling you that the vendor's quite happy to drop the price down and they're giving you information which um, is, is advantageous to me, but disadvantageous to, to the, their client, the vendor. And they don't care whether it's sold for £10,000 less, because that's not going to affect their commission very much. I mean, if their commission is, say, 2%, you know, and, and, and it's a half a million pound property, you know, that, that, that's quite a lot of commission. That's like £10,000 commission there. Um, dropping it by... Uh, uh, ten ten thousand pounds is only a couple of hundred quid it's not going to affect them very much is it so they don't care how they, they just want to get the place sold and get the deal done and it, it wouldn't be a bad thing if estate agents were regulated and had to be licensed in america even in places like the philippines real estate brokers and real estate agents are licensed they have to take exams they have to know what they're doing you know you're asking the estate agent here and ask them about the property. They oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I don't know anything about that. Where's the schools? Well, there's a school down the road. But they don't know anything about the property. They 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 got very little knowledge about the legalities. Um, so, real estate in in America is a much more valued profession, and people do tough exams to like like a financial advisor would to to become qualified. And and this is the case even in countries like the Philippines. Um, so, uh, I, I think it's not a bad thing, but if if um if on the other hand you know the quick sale for a property it's a service there if people need to sell fast it's a service so yes it, it may be looked at by trading standards but as long as they're doing things legally and people are aware of what's going on then fine you know if you've got a property and you want to sell it fast i, I can help you sell a property fast uh, but you're not going to sell it as fast as you would if you were happy to wait for six months until somebody agrees to buy it at what you want to sell it for. But then, as you know, when you're selling a property in this country, people can agree to buy a property at a certain price, but later on they can change their mind, they can back out, they can take six months to, to, to exchange or complete. You know, you might be in a chain and some people can't afford to do that. So some people sometimes need to sell their property quickly and, and fast and, and therefore they, they have to take a, a drop in price and that that's business isn't it that that's the way it goes if if i'm prepared to buy your property now cash on the nail quickly um then you, you know i i would not give you the top price that you want and and that you would get if you're prepared to wait three five six months even a year i mean some some properties have been on the market if you look on right move you can see properties have been on the market for 18 months two years sometimes so what are they sitting there for maybe they would have been better off selling it cheaper and moving on rather than hanging on for the the dream price that they they may never get, and that dream price is probably given to them by an estate agent who told them, "Yeah, I'll get you half a million without really being able to back it up or substantiate it. He just wants you to list the property with them so he can get his his points for that week and get his commission. So yeah, as I said, trading standards are looking into this, um, but I think the whole market should be regulated because it's the biggest transaction in in our lives, and you know we know that estate agents now are also dealers themselves. You know, we know that there's a, a massive conflict of interest when estate agents that I know very well, nice people, but, you know, they go into a property and if they like it, they'll buy it themselves at, at a knockdown price, particularly if it's a vulnerable old person that, you know, doesn't know what they're doing. They'll, they'll do the deal themselves. Well, how can that be uh, ethical, let alone... Uh, it, it, it's just a conflict of interest, isn't it? It shouldn't be allowed. Um, it, it, it doesn't... It it's in no way makes any sense to, to allow someone who's acting for the client, acting as an estate agent for the client, to be able to say, well, I'll buy that pr property myself uh, at a knockdown price because he's on the inside, isn't he? he he's on, on the inside track, so he knows what the the, the vendor is. He's, he's got an unfair advantage over uh, average buyers. So we know this needs to be regulated, but whether it will be done or not, I don't know. The government's got a lot of things on at the moment. Brexit's happening uh, in, in a few days' time. So there's going to be lots of things going on. I don't think this is going to be looked at any time soon. But definitely property market should be more regulated. And particularly with leaseholds, uh, there should be a, a massive reform with leaseholds. It's very unfair at the moment, the way leaseholds are extensions, leasehold extensions are valued. And that is something that they are looking into. 
and also the way leaseholds are run. It goes back to this feudal uh, landowner system, um, you know, going back hundreds of years, the, the landed gentry, and it's just an unfair system. Leaseholds ought to be phased out and scrapped, and everything should be, you know, a share of the freehold and a fair system that, you know, allows leasehold, allows flat owners, people who can't afford to buy a house and buy a flat, to have a, a fair deal and a secure system where they're not going to be, uh, you know, charged rip-off prices by, by freeholders and landlords and um, and managing agents. As, and I've seen this in the past. I've been to court over it, and it's it's a massive problem. There are people buying up freeholds all over the country. Some own 12, 10, 12,000 freeholds, and they're not doing that for the good of their health. They're doing that to make money from leaseholders. So that's my little rant on leaseholders, on leaseholds at the moment. I would I would avoid buying leaseholds myself unless it's a share of the freehold or the, or you, you know you can get hold of the freehold. Um, it's it's just a massive legal minefield. So thanks for listening, uh, and have a great day. And uh, just you know think about Brexit coming up very soon. Uh, there's going to be a big change to the country. If you listen to this after Brexit, I apologise, but there's obviously a big change coming up in the country. On the markets, by the way, the markets are getting a bit nervous about this coronavirus in China. Um, I, I think China is is not telling the truth about the extent of this virus, and there could be a lot more cases uh, out there than we we know of. And we know that in China, the media is is not very open; it's very much controlled. And who knows what's going to happen? We, we've got to be very very careful with this. Uh, I think tens of thousands of people will die. However, they say that every year, thirty one thousand people worldwide die die from just the flu. So is it as big as we, we think? On the subject of China, uh, the government in the UK has just awarded a contract to Huawei for this 5G contract network thing. And uh, the Americans are not pleased about it. But in a typical British fudge, they've they've managed to say, well, we're not going to give them all the contract. We'll give them a third of it. And uh, they're not going to have access to this, that and the other. Well, come on, you know, uh, pull the other one. I think it's a, it's a big fudge. And I think it's wrong. I think th- these sort of contracts should go to British com- British companies and British owned businesses. But the tendering system that the government have laid down mean that they have to go for the cheapest and most competitive quote, which, of course, China can give because it's a state owned company. And they're thinking long, long term of, of getting control of the market. And I, I don't like th- this Chinese expansion expansionism where they're going into countries like the Philippines and just controlling everything. And that's what's going to happen here if we're, if we're not very careful. So I, 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 I'm very worried about this Huawei deal. Um, I think we should have been a lot more cautious. And I think we should have been giving this to, to British companies, uh, especially as it's an important government contract with security concerns. China has been known to use the, this technology to spy on other countries. They, they're known to, to steal technology. And I, I think we've been completely naive here. Something's not right. So, so there you go. That's my uh, that's my Huawei rant, but it's not going to make any difference whatsoever, is it? So it's going to go ahead one way or the other. So thanks for listening. This is Charles Kelly bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. Thank you.